Good morning, boys and girls. It's Monday, May 11th. Oh my goodness, we're almost at the end of our school year. How did this happen so fast? I um, hope you guys had a good Mother's Day with your moms, and I hope that you did something special with them. And um, let me know if you, if you made anything for them or if you wrote them any cards or any letters or anything like that. Um, so hopefully you guys had a nice day with your mom. I had a nice day with my family. We actually... Mr. Martinez bought an RV for the family for me for Mother's Day. So we went uh, to Lucky Peak and had a picnic and did some fishing and it was a lovely day. So I hope you guys had a good day too. All right, let's go ahead and get going on our Monday work. Um, remember, we're going to do uh, new assignments Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and leave Friday for makeup work. Um, for anyone that needs to get some stuff made up. And then um, you always have and through Sunday for me, for my class to turn any work in for this week. So you do have all week long to get it done. Um, we're working on our opinion paper. So hopefully you've got that finished. If you haven't finished your animal report, um, that needs to come in. We're, we're already on to our opinion paper. So if you need some help with that and um, let's see here if I can think of anything else. Nope. I think that's all for the, for the updates that I can think of. So um, make sure that you have a, a parent send me your daily assignment checkoff sheet. If they haven't done so already, that's the only thing I need them to send me a picture of. And then I will check spelling city and make sure everything's in on there. All right, so today, Monday, May 11th, 2020, we're going to work on morning work page 135 in your morning workbook. We've got our very last spelling list for the year. Can you believe I just said that? The very last spelling list for third grade. Kind of sad. We're on spelling list 30. Now, some of you might say, well, wait, we just did spelling list 28 last week, and you are very correct. Spelling list 29, um, I felt wasn't a great list. Uh, it was a, a lot of redundant words we've already covered. So I thought we would do list 30 because it has some new words for you, and they're more like fourth grade words. So um, that's our very last one. And then we have read works. Uh, we're going to do problems and consequences. You can do the question sets and the vocabulary. You can do everything in one day. You can space it out and do a little bit every day, whatever works best for you. If you have any past read works that you need to finish, please get those done throughout the week as well. We're going to do five new words for this week and their definitions in our, in our vocabulary book. So these are all the last time we're going to be doing that. This week is our last time for these new assignments. Oh my, that makes me very sad. All right, we're gonna do our grammar. We're gonna finish with suffixes. We're gonna watch, uh, we're gonna do it on our daily video, do our slideshow today. Then you have um, writing lesson number five on opinion writing in your Google Classroom. And then in vision, we are gonna do our math for, math is fun interactive notebook lesson 13.4 and then of course if you finish all of that you can do your practice your times tables from that very first monday um, or you can do any of the choice things on the bottom of our sheet or any past due things so um, let's move on to our morning work so grab your morning workbook and we are on page 135 i believe let me see here yep 135 and let's go over the language part. So we have read the sentence, write subject or object to tell the function of the bold noun. Wow, we're starting to really get into some fourth grade stuff here. So giraffes are the subject we're talking about, have long necks to reach leaves on high tree branches. So that's what we're talking about. Who has long necks? Giraffes. So then you can tell, you can write your subject here. So I'm going to give you an example on this one. Chef Francisco boils pasta. What does Chef Francisco do? He boils what? Pasta. That makes it, it the object of our sentence. So see if you can figure out what three and four are. 
in those spaces. We have number three, hospitals help sick and injured people. Is the bold word a subject or an object? Because she's sick, Abby uses lots of tissues. So the object of the sentence is what the subject is using. Please let me know if you have any questions on that, if that's confusing. Since we aren't in the classroom normally, we would work a lot more on that. Look at the shapes and then answer the items. So we're looking at the attributes of this triangle and this square. Tell how the shapes are similar and how are they different. So give me something that is the same for these, these two shapes and give me something that is different for these two shapes. If you have a hard time, think about these vertices here. Tell how you can use a shape's attributes or traits to compare it to other shapes. So what they're asking you to do is explain how knowing the, the parts of this shape can help you compare it to other shapes. How does that work? And then read the text and answer the item. We're going to look at number seven. Describe Trudy's personality based on her actions. Use examples from the text. So we're going to explain um, what Trudy is, what, who Trudy is, or what kind of person she is based on what we hear in the story, and then give us an example of how you know that's how she is. So let's read. Uh, Lan, Trudy, and Bob set up a lemonade stand outside. It was Lan's job to bring lemonade. Bob was bringing cups, and Trudy had to bring a for sale sign. Lan and Bob got to the stand on time, but Trudy was very late. The sloppy sign she brought looked like it was scribbled quickly. Lan asked why it looked that way, and Trudy shrugged her shoulders. That day, lots of people stopped and asked what the sign said before they got a lemonade. So describe Trudy's personality based on how she behaved in the story on her actions and give an example from the text. When you're finished, have, an, have a, someone at home check it. Make sure that you have everything done. Here is your last list, spelling list 30. We're going to do antonyms. So we have daytime. The opposite is nighttime. Risky, the opposite of risky is safe. The opposite of clean is filthy. The opposite of combine is separate. So each word on here is the opposite. We're doing the antonyms. So that should be fun this week. There's our alternative spelling list. Very last one for third grade. Oh my goodness. All right, and then this is in your math interactive notebook. You're gonna be doing uh, lesson 13, uh, four. And so you're going to cut out the top and these symbols here and then separate all the pieces. And then you're going to go through them and decide if it's greater than, less than, or equal to the fraction on the other side of the page. So remember, look at the denominator. Which one is higher? The bigger number is the smaller amount. So on this one, the line is broken up into four pieces, and we have three out of those four. On this one, the line is broken up into five pieces, and we have three out of the five pieces. So is three-fifths greater than, less than, or equal to three-fourths? And you're going to want to say that three-fifths is less than three-fourths. So you're going to compare your fractions. Look at your denominator first. The biggest number is the smaller fraction. Remember that one. And then if you have any that are equal, you're going to just put an equal sign. And then I will put the uh, answers on tomorrow's video so you can check it there. All right. So that's all we're doing in Math Interactive Notebook today. And then let's go over to our um, Google Classroom really quick. So in Google, I've got a mouthful today. Google Classroom. So prefix task cards, um, that this, I don't know why, would not work. I kept putting it on here right with this one and it wouldn't work. So if you would like to check your work from last week, there's your task card answer key and you can check all of your answers 
from last week right here. See if you, how you, all right, back to classwork or the classroom, excuse me. All right, we are, and then we're doing opinion writing lesson five today. So we're just going to click it open. You're going to watch the video first revising the lead and the introduction and then you're going to click on to this one and oh there's lots of me so we won't move it you're going to read through uh, hook readers with something interesting like a story a fact a question a sound a quote you can hook them with an opinion or what does it say under this one or no reasons is that what that says Ah, I have no reasons to read. Okay, so you're going to go over this to think about your opinion and your opinion paper. All right, and we are on vocabulary four for the fourth quarter and the fourth week. It's doubling and tripling and quadrupling. There we go. All right, so your five words, we have solitary, scent, dawn, dusk, and linger. So looking at the first word, so grab your vocabulary book. Remember, you can always pause the video so that if you have need to have time to get things. And we're going to write solitary on the first word. And your definition for solitary means all alone. So if you are in solitary, a solitary game, that means you are playing a game all alone. You may have even heard of the card game Solitaire. That's a one person card game. All right, second word is scent. Scent, and this is not like the money scent. This is like the smell. An odor that is generally good or a smell that is generally good. And the third one is dawn, the first appearance of light in the morning. So that's when the dawn begins is when the sun is starting to give its first light. Okay, so you can pause this so that you can get that copy down in your book. And then we have dusk, early evening when the sun is beginning to set. So we have an antonym again. So we have uh, dawn the beginning and dusk, the end. So they're opposites of the day. The last one is linger, to be slow to leave or stop an activity. So you're just kind of hanging out. You're kind of you linger. You're not getting it done. You're not staying. You're not leaving. You're just kind of, I guess maybe now kids are using the word hanging out instead, but that would be linger. All right, back to our check off here. So we've talked about our morning work page. We talked about our spelling city. You're going to do problems and consequences on read works. We just talked about our vocabulary, five words and their definitions. We've um, talked about our Google, Google Classroom Lesson 5 on writing, um, our opinion writing. We've talked about our Envision Math, Math is Fun Interactive Notebook. And so last, we have our grammar slideshow on suffixes. Let's go over what a suffix is. A suffix is a group of letters that are added to the end of a word. So last week we did prefix, which are a group of letters that are added to the beginning of a word. This is at the end of a word. The letters change the meaning of the word. Okay. So if we have beauty, which is the root word, and we add full as the suffix, we get the word beautiful. That's a new word. What does beauty mean? So what do you think beauty means to you? What does beautiful mean? How did the suffix change the meaning? Beauty plus full equals beautiful. Filled with, filled with beauty. The suffix full means filled with. So remember last week we did the prefixes. We had re and dis and un. So this week we have suffixes. 
So we're going to have a bunch of words with full as one, as one of our suffixes. If full means filled with, what do each of these words mean? Graceful, colorful, thoughtful. So if beautiful means filled with beauty, what does graceful mean? Filled with grace. Colorful, filled with color. Thoughtful, filled with thoughts. All right, so we have a new suffix here, less. Home plus less equals homeless. The root, root word is home. Our suffix is less, and that gives us a new word, homeless. So what does the word home mean? The place you live. What does a homeless mean? Being without a home. So how did the suffix change the meaning? Home plus less equals homeless. Less means without. So homeless means without home. So we've had full and we've had less. If less means without, what do each of these words mean? Wireless, without wires. Hairless, without hair. Fearless, without fear. Right, we have our next suffix, which is er. So garden is our root word, er is our suffix. We get the new one, gardener, which is the new word. What does garden mean? What does gardener mean? How did the suffix change the meaning? So think about that. Garden plus er equals gardener. One who is what er means. One who gardens is a gardener. The suffix er or or means one who. So we can have the letters er or or here. That means one who. If er means one who, what do each of these words mean? Driver, one who drives. Teacher, one who teaches. Writer, one who writes. So we've had full, less, and er, and next is li. Root word is quiet, the suffix is li, and that makes quietly. What does quiet mean? What does quietly mean? Think about how the suffix changed the meaning. Quiet plus li equals quietly. Li means in a way that is. So in a way that is. So quietly means in a way that is quiet. Suffix li means in a way that is. If li means in a way that is, what do each of these words mean? Seriously, in a way that is serious. Poorly, in a way that is poor. Loudly, in a way that is loud. All right. Use suffixes and root words to make a word for each definition. So we have without harm. So if we go back, what was without? We can say harmless. One who reads is a reader. In a way that is sweet, it's sweetly. Filled with care is careful. All right, that is the end of that one. All right, and so we have gone through all of our work for today. If you have any questions, please send me an email. You guys are doing great. Um, there's a lot of things we're finishing up for the last time um, this week, so we'll be talking about that as we go through. And I hope you guys have a great day today, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, nice job.